Hey everybody, RPG here. Today I want to talk to you guys about PC gaming and I want to answer the question that so many people have been asking, which is, do you need a gaming PC to run Botticera and dive into your favorite retro video games? So this isn't a super easy question to answer because with Botticera we have access to so many different collections and each collection has different requirements. So the best route to go is you want to first make note of which collections are most important to you. So if you're going to be de dealing with uh, mostly older game collections, stuff like early arcade games, um, and some of the early home console collections like Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, Genesis, pretty much everything from the mid to late 80s all the way through the mid 90s, then you're able to use pretty much any PC. It doesn't have to be a gaming PC. It could even be a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi 4, for example. Pretty much all of your classic arcade games and early home console collections will work on Raspberry Pi with RetroPie or even Botticera pretty flawlessly. The only limitations are really with the Dreamcast, N64, and PSP collections. Those are going to be a little bit more hit or miss. For the most part, you can get into about... Um, I would say about 70-75% of Dreamcast and N64 titles, and then PSP is going to be uh, much lower, probably about 50-50 on you know what works and what doesn't work there. So um, that being said, if it works on a single board computer, it's going to work on pretty much any PC out there. So you don't have to go with a gaming PC for those collections. Now, collections that are more advanced than that, pretty much everything from PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, Wii, PlayStation 3, those are going to need a lot more power, a lot more CPU speed, and most importantly, a lot more cooling. So most people actually overlook cooling completely. They're mostly worried about the power of the PC and the CPU speed, which is definitely a important part to it, but cooling is also just as important. So when I first got into Botticera, one of the first computers that I tested everything out on was the Dell Optiplex 9020. This was not a gaming PC by any means, but it had a decent amount of power to it. It was a good sized PC. So I started testing out games on it. I was able to get into all of those early collections that I already mentioned effortlessly, no issue whatsoever. So then I started kicking it up a few notches and I started testing out GameCube. GameCube worked for the most part. Uh, Wii was a little bit hit or miss. Certain games worked, certain games it was uh, just a little bit too much for it to handle. And then I started testing out Xbox and PlayStation 2. And what I found with these collections was I was able to get into the games. I was able to play the games for a period of time quite well. So let's take Xbox, for example. I jumped into about five or six different titles for Xbox. And what I experienced on every single one of these was I was able to play level one of the games pretty much effortlessly. But where everything started to take a turn was in level two, which was consistently at about 15 minutes to 20 minutes of gameplay. That's about how long it took for level one in most of these games. By the time I got to level two, everything was just taking an awful turn. I was experiencing screen tearing, audio cutouts, as well as glitches and lags in the overall gameplay experience. So I started to think about, okay, what's different about level two than level one? And in most cases, the gameplay for each of these titles was exactly the same. It wasn't the case of like level one was moderate and then level two was just chaos in the actual game where you're experiencing like, um, you know, more advanced graphics and overall just a uh, more chaotic gameplay experience. Everything was pretty much consistent. So I started to test out the temperatures on the PC and the first 15 minutes, everything was relatively cool. But after that, the computer had heated up to the point where you could fry an egg on top of it. So when your system starts to overheat, there's no warnings that pop up and say, hey, we're overheating here. Your warnings are screen tearing, audio cutouts, lags, glitches, everything just starts to deteriorate really rapidly. And that's when you know you have an issue. And if you're not actually touching your PC, you don't know that it's cooling related. So that's the experience that I had with using a regular PC. The fans on a regular PC are meant for just your average PC usage. They're not meant to be cooling a system that's emulating really advanced games. So that's where a gaming PC really gives you a better experience. Not only do gaming PCs have typically more power as well as a quicker CPU speed, but they also have 
extensive cooling systems that are meant to cool PCs that are emulating games. So in that case, if you're using a PC for Bodicera and your intention is to play these more advanced game collections, then a gaming PC is definitely the route to go for these reasons. But at the end of the day, it really just boils down to which collections you're going to be using the most. So if you're somebody that isn't into GameCube, isn't into Wii, isn't into Xbox or PlayStation 2, then you definitely don't need a gaming PC because a regular PC is going to have all the capabilities that you need to emulate those type of games. But most people want to have Bodicera because you're able to access so many different collections and you don't want to be limited to just certain collections. So for me, I started using an HP Pavilion gaming PC and the particular model that I'm using, there's a bunch of different versions of it. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below that you can click through and just check out exactly what I'm using because obviously I haven't been able to go out and check every single gaming PC out there, but I know exactly what I use and you can take a look at the specs on what I'm using and compare it to some of your other options out there if you don't wanna go with the exact version that I'm using. So it'll give you a reference point um, but I'm also here to answer any questions that you guys have. So if you have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to hit me up in the comment section or reach out to me directly. I'm always here, always happy to help you guys out in any way that I possibly can. And I'm gonna be doing a bunch of additional videos just talking about the various other aspects to retro gaming on Bodicera or on different PCs. So that's gonna do it for this video today. I wanted to kind of keep it short and sweet, but I definitely wanted to answer this question because like I said before, it's not a super straightforward and easy question to answer. There's a lot of different moving parts that are involved to it. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, smash the like button for me, but also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, because we do a ton of different videos based around retro gaming. We do tutorials, product reviews, gameplay demos. We have the Forgotten Favorites YouTube series, which comes out every single Monday and Thursday night. So just a ton of great content on here. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And then of course you could check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching today.